Hope you guys have enjoyed the previous videos by learning in and out of collection framework. Now it's time to learn about another beautiful concepts and interesting topic in Java, which is multi-threading. I heard from many developers saying that multi-threading is one of the toughest topic in Java. The reason behind that is people think like, okay, it is developed by Oracle Java team where it is core level, the language level, and it is very difficult to understand the concepts, how it is actually working internally. So I have taken the toughest topic and split into multiple videos and want to go in and out of each concepts in multi-threading and I want to make you guys feel comfortable in terms of like before I appear for any interview as well as coding and also I will go through with the real-time programming so you guys will understand where we really use multi-threading in our real-time programming in our client place in this video we are going to learn about what is threat local so threat local is nothing but the scope of a particular thread. So I'm going to explain the thread scope or the scope of a thread with the help of other areas, let's say by with the help of HTTP scope or the session scope or application scope or a thread scope so that you guys can easily capture what is thread scope. Also, I'm going to show you guys how we are going to create a thread local and how we are going to use multiple methods which are defined inside this thread local and how we are going to actually it works in the real-time programming. So without any further delay, let's get started. So the threat local is a class in Java, which has been developed by the Oracle development team. Basically they have created this class since JDK 1.2, but what is the purpose of creating this class in Java? So threat local is nothing but the local variables of a particular threat. So if I want to define some particular variable to a particular threat, then I can define it with the help of threat local. So that is the beauty of threat local. So when I say, uh, scope. So scope is nothing but only for that particular thread, right? So before I get into deeper into what is thread local, I want to explain with this scenarios. Basically, you guys already might know what is a HTTP scope. So whenever you are having, uh, you know, you are sending multiple requests to your server, let's say you are writing a program and you are accessing your program with the help of, let's say, Postman collection or you are uh, sending a request through browser, right? Get method, post method, a lot of multiple methods, right? Whenever you are sending request, so that each request is nothing but uh, each request to server, right? If I want to define some attributes, meaning like, you know, if I want to set some value for a particular key in the particular each request, if I want to set it, then it means it is called HTTP scope. So the scope is for each HTTP request, isn't it? Similarly, if I want to maintain the scope for a particular session, let's say once the user logs in, so it means like, you know, they are able to get into the system and they are able to do their activities. Let's say they are making some transaction of balance stands or anything they do, right? But whatever they do, it will be valid only till the session is uh, valid, right? So here the session is the scope. Basically the attributes are set only to the particular session. Once the session get expires, it means like they have to log out. Again, they have to revalidate it. So a simple example is such a Gmail, right? So Gmail means like, let's say any email or any banking transaction, once you log into the system, so it means like you are not going to send every time user ID password, isn't it? So once your session get established, the user ID password authentication is valid till the session is uh, valid, right? Once the session get expires, then your attributes also will get expires. Similarly, at the application level. So let's say you are deploying an application and if you want to define something uh, at the application level or the context at the application context, then you have to define the application scope. Similarly, for each thread, if I want to define some context or if I want to define some scope of a particular thread, that is where the thread local comes in picture. Example, transaction ID. Let's say uh, in your multi-threaded environment, one thread is executing and that thread is actually doing some transaction. So that transaction ID should be specifically to that particular thread. Otherwise, you don't know which thread was executed and what is the way to debug the issue. If there is anything like if you want to track it, right? So then with the help of transaction ID, you can able to identify which thread was actually executed that particular uh, transaction. And that's how it actually works for the thread scope. So, so as I said, thread local is a class in Java and it has been defined by Oracle developer team. And in the thread class, let's say you have like, let's say multiple threads in your program, you are creating multiple threads. Let's say T1, T2, T3, T4. And let's say there is a common variable, let's say sum, right? But if you want to define this particular sum, sum is nothing but like int i or any variable, right? So in your Java class, you write a local variable or instance variable, right? So what do you mean by instance variable? If you declare something variable at the class level, if you define something variable at the method level, it is called local variable. Similarly, for every thread, if you want to define some variable or if you want to set the scope, then it is called thread local, which is let's say for this thread, the sum equal to 10. For this T1, the sum equal to 200. For this 
T2 thread, the sum is equal to 50. So it won't conflict, but every thread will have its own value, right? This is how the thread local works. Now let me talk about how to create the thread local. It is very simple way thread local t equal to new thread local of. So basically there are multiple methods defined by Oracle developers team. So what you can do is you are writing your main program and from there you are actually starting a job or thread. So there is a th child thread, right? So in the child thread program, if you write like this thread local t equal to new thread local of. So this particular piece of line of code has been executed by child thread, isn't it? So then the child thread is nothing but this is a scope, right? So this will be under the child thread scope. Once it comes out of child thread, the scope will be different. So let's say int sum equal to 30. This line is also executed by child thread. So int sum equal to 30 and I'm creating a new thread local. And then here I have a method. Basically I can override it initial value. So initial value I can say 30 and then I can be able to, uh, you know, uh, probably I can say int sum is equal to 30 or zero. And then I can initialize it here. What are the value I want? So similarly, there are multiple methods that are defined inside thread local class. It is all about how uh, the developer want to use it. Right. So there is a method called get. So get is nothing but to get the value of the threat local value. Let's say if I want to get the value of sum, then I can use get off. Then if I want to set the new value, if I want to set the value for the particular variable sum, then I can use set method. It's like get run setters. Right. And then there is a method called initial value. Initial value is nothing but as I write here, it's public object initial value of basically it is going to uh, initialize the uh, you know uh, very first value for a particular variable if you want to define it then you can override this one so all these three methods are defined in jdk 1.2 guys and then in the upcoming like you know in the latest version of jdk 1.5 they added one more uh, method which is nothing but remove if i want to remove a particular attribute for a particular uh, thread then i can use remove method so basically it will remove it so there are some key important points which we should aware about it in terms of threat local so basically since as I said like thread local is nothing but local to a particular thread so it can be accessed only by the particular thread it won't be accessed to the another threads so that is the first point second th second thing is once the thread is in active state and once it goes to dead state then whatever the variables or whatever the scope of the particular thread everything will be uh, you know uh, will get vanished or it means like it will be available for a garbage character whenever the garbage character runs it is going to take those and it will um, remove it so this is nothing but the second point the third point is by default let's say it won't inherit anything from the parent thread let's say you have a parent thread. let's say in your main program you are uh, calling a child thread right so here the the parent pro thread is nothing but the main thread but the child thread is nothing but whatever the program you written the job right and there are run method whatever you're writing right that class is nothing but child thread but by default it won't inherit any values from parent thread to child thread but if you want to make it specifically you want to inherit it there is another class which is called inheritable thread local so you can create an object for it. If you use this one, whatever the variables, whatever the values you define or whatever the uh, variables or the thread local which you define in the parent thread, that will be automatically inherited to the child thread. So this is how it actually works. I'm going to write this program and I want to show it in the Eclipse so that you guys will get in and out of it. I hope you guys have understood this concept very clearly. Hello guys, this is the practical session where we are going to see the thread local in Java. So uh, as we have seen in our practical, uh, sorry, theoretical session, we have seen what is threat local and how it works. Now I have written some program where I want to demonstrate how it actually works. As we know, uh, we can use executor service to create, uh, you know, the threat pool. So basically we can say executor service is part of concurrent package and we can create an object of that. And by we can create a threat pool object with the three threads in it. Now, after I create a service, uh, executor service object, I can submit a jobs. So I have created two jobs, one is for Karthik, other one is for J, and then I'm submitting it by calling service.submit of J, right? This one we have already seen in our previous videos as well. Uh, finally, we are going to call service.shutdown. So the way how what we're doing here is we are creating a jobs, which is nothing but a array of uh, whatever we want to do it. And then we are going to submit one by one by iterating it. And then finally, we are shutting down the service. If you guys see here, this is a child thread uh, which implements runnable interface. When I say runnable interface, which means it is going to call the run method. So this method will be called by the job or uh, thread each time when it executes. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying int count equal to zero and then thread local t1 is equal to new thread local of inside that I'm actually overriding the initial value, which was uh, already it was zero. Now I'm making it to one. 
right so here what i'm doing here is using the threat local which is a class in java i am actually overwriting the value of this particular variable count within which is, which is uh, scope is within that particular thread if you go and execute this main class if you see here inside child thread j the pool name is one thread name is two value is one so there are two threads it executed right if you guys see here there are two threads executing one thread is for executing with the karthik the job other thread is to execute the job with the name j but every time if you see the thread value is initialized the the local thread value which is count is actually reset and then it get again overwritten right so it's not like changing from one to two right because this particular variable is local to the particular thread when it got executed so this is the difference in using threat local so this is basically used whenever you want to define any scope of any variable or anything uh, uh, only to the particular thread then you can use threat local so this is the feature which you can use it in uh, concurrent packages so um, threat local is very important uh, to understand how we can define something scope to a particular thread so similar to http scope or session scope we can also define some variables or attributes to only particular threads so this is how it actually works so let me reiterate it here so in this uh, main class where we have executed service where we are defining a jobs by creating objects of this particular method uh, class called uh, child thread so uh, after that we are creating an object of uh, the executor service by calling executors dot new fixed thread pool of three which means i am creating a thread pool of with size three and then i am iterating through this uh, particular array and then i am calling submit method so when i say service dot submit which means it is going to get the thread pools uh, threads from the thread pool and it is going to use it to execute the callable sorry runnable method finally we are shutting down whenever it calls the runnable method it is going to be execute this run method and basically when it says run method uh, it is going to call instantiate this one as well so this has been um, executed by a particular thread isn't it so that is the reason every time when it execute it sets to zero and then it is actually incrementing to one uh, that is the reason every time when it executes always we can see it as only one so that is the reason for each thread it's always the value is one so this is how the local thread actually thread local works i hope you guys have understood this concept uh, if you guys have any questions on this particular coding please post your comments thank you bye bye i hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section and i will be more than happy to assist keep watching all our videos there are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys